Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I have two unfortunately very broad questions. Um, number one, given the Israeli protests we saw in some response to the violence in Gaza, can you see a return of the Israeli left to power with the re-election of someone like Shai and Piers? And number two, if Palestine ever is a fully fledged state, do you think that Arab countries will respect their sovereignty? Well, on the first question, there is absolutely no grounds for hope. Uh, as Gideon Levy said, it's probably the Israeli columnist who's good. He's, sh he's shrewd and uh, he, he speaks his mind. Uh, if it were to happen, which it's not going to happen, but if the so-called Zionist camp, the so-called moderates like Livni and Herzog, if they're elected, they say it'll be a complete disaster for the Palestinians because they're going to claim we need to negotiate five years. That's what Herzog, the Labour Party person, says. Yeah, five more years, and five more years, and five more years, and five more years. There's not, they're not going to do anything unless they're forced to do something. Uh, why anyone thinks, uh, look, the basic fact is Israel has created something remarkable in the history of humanity. It's created the first occup uh, cost-free occupation in the history of the world. The EU pays for the, uh, the financial side of the occupation. The uh, Palestinians do all the dirty work. They do the policing, the torture, and all of that stuff. That's all done by the Palestinians now. And the Americans do the political blocking for Israel at the UN. <coughs> so why would they end the occupation? They have absolutely no incentive to end the occupation. So the, the idea that they're going to end it because uh, so-called moderates are going to be elected. It's just, that's just um, pie in the sky. Uh, that, that will not uh, bring any significant change. Uh, what has to be done is force has to be exerted from without to make Israelis pay a price for the occupation. Uh, and that hasn't happened. Uh, and the second question was? Um, I, I've reached a point in life where I can't uh, speculate on questions like that. <coughs> Nobody can predict these things. Who could have told you two years ago what was seen to be the most stable, powerful state in, the, in that area, Syria, was going to disintegrate? Uh, I can name 20 things that happened uh, in the past two or three years which nobody would have predicted. Among them, the emergence of ISIS, which just came with a blink of an eye. Uh, so I think it's pointless to try to speculate, and you can't build politics and speculation. Uh, the, only, the only possibility right now is ending the occupation, creating a Palestinian state. It's not going to be much, I know that. It's going to be surrounded by Jordan, the United States, excuse me, Jordan, Israel, Egypt. Uh, it's going to barely have any breathing room. Uh, that's um, it's the realities. Uh, but anything else, it doesn't seem to me to be realistic. And then you have two options. You can let the occupation continue until um, uh, Armageddon, or uh, you aim for what's possible now, and that's uh, two states which, as I say, I'm perfectly willing to acknowledge is for the Palestinians not much. 